Hello, welcome back to the desk corner or welcome to my channel if you are new here. Today's video is going to be really relaxed and just kind of chill. I'm going to be drawing a zebra with colored pencils and making a few modifications to make it a little bit more interesting. Let me show you guys what we're working with here. If you guys can see without the reflection, but here's a zebra. Still trying to figure out if I want to maybe trim this. I think I'm going to trim this side. It looks kind of awkward right now, just a half zebra. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump straight to the desk view. I guess we can start with the inspiration for this video. This penguin's drawing I drew back in 2020, a few months ago. I guess, I guess it's longer than a few months ago now, which is, I mean, I guess we're almost halfway through 2021. Oh my gosh, that's insane. But at the end of 2020, some of you might remember I did this penguin's drawing and it is realistic, but I just added some colors to make it more interesting. A lot of blues and greens and just turquoise colors um, because I wanted to spice it up a little bit. And ever since I drew that, I've been thinking about how I want to do another drawing similar to this, another animal drawing where I add in extra color to make it a little more fun. Now the issue I had when creating this drawing is I used Strathmore Bristol Smooth Paper, so I maxed out on layers fairly quickly, which is okay. There's not a lot of color that I needed to use or a lot of blending or anything, so that was fine. Um, but this time, I'm going with my Strathmore Mixed Media Pad because this has a bit more of a vellum texture, um, a bit more tooth to hold the pigment and to add additional layers. So let's put the penguins aside, they're so cute. Now let's quickly go through the colors we're going to use today. I've got my very stubby Faber-Castell Polychromos Black, which obviously needs replacement, but I'm avoiding replacing it because I'm going to just end up buying a bunch of supplies if I even go and look at the art shop or, or go online. We also have Payne's Gray. Um, by Polychromos Cold Gray 3, and then this is not a Polychromos, it's a Holbein. This is the Indigo, which I talked about in a recent video. I really like this Indigo, so we're going to be using this instead of the Polychromos Indigo. Uh, we have Luminance, Indian Throne Blue, this one is Gray Blue, Slate Gray, and White. Alright, so apparently I didn't think to record, or I forgot to record, the part where I colored in the eyes, but that's okay because they're pretty much just black with a little bit of gray and highlights. And I always kind of like to start with the features when I'm drawing a person or an animal. So I went in, of course, naturally after finishing the eyes to work on the muzzle, snout, nose, mouth area, I guess. This is a zebra, not a horse, but I always think of muzzle when I think about a horse. So. That's what I thought about when I was drawing the zebra. Now I wanted to get this done first because this area has the most detail. The rest of the drawing is just the zebra's body stripes and this is where I would add fun colors in and do a little bit of blending and things like that but it wasn't going to be anything complicated, just a lot of stripes so I thought I would get the detailed areas out of the way first and I actually do have a lot of fun creating areas like this when I'm working on an animal. I have more fun with this part than I do actually creating the animal's fur or body, depending on what kind of animal it is. I'm not really a big fan of drawing fur, which is why I avoid very furry animals most of the time. Um, I just have more fun with different textures, like the wrinkly texture of an animal's nose and mouth area or snout area. Um, and the eyes and all of that and scaly animals too. I really enjoy drawing the scales So yeah enough about my rant about the things I like to draw with animals here um, But you guys can probably see I'm using a really short black polychromos which I mentioned before and That was starting to hurt my hand, but I really cannot find my pencil extender and I don't want to give up on my black polychromos just yet and I'm probably not going to buy a new one quite yet just because I do have some other black pencils even though Polychromos is my favorite. But I do have some other black pencils. I have the Luminance. I have the Holbein, which is similar. It's another oil-based pencil like Polychromos and similar in hardness and firmness of the lead. So maybe I'll give Holbein a chance for now and then when I'm ready to restock and buy pencils open stock, then I'll get the Faber-Castell because I don't know why I missed that in my last open stock pencil run, but I know that what's going to happen is I'm just going to buy too much stuff because that's what always happens. So we're going to try and wait on that. I still have a little bit left in my black polychromos and I'll probably use my Holbein after that. All right, so as you guys can see, I'm just working on the stripes now and I'm adding in the colors that I mentioned to you guys earlier, the indigo blue and also those slate gray or 
was it slate gray or slate gray blue? I think it was slate gray and gray blue. And those were from the Luminance set. And if you're wondering why I mixed so many different sets in here, it's really just to do with the preference of the Holbein indigo blue color. I just preferred that color and I wanted to use it. Really, there wasn't any other reason for luminance. I just liked the, it was the same thing. I kind of just preferred those colors, but also they're a little waxier than the polychromos, so I was able to blend a little easier. Maybe I don't want to say easier. I was able to blend faster. That's the thing about pencils that have a little more wax in them is you can usually blend them a bit faster. They're just a bit softer and luminance are not really, really that soft. Like there's a lot of pencils like Prismacolor, Color Soft that are just softer than luminance, but they're definitely softer than Holbein's and Polychromos for sure. I am definitely the type of person that prefers an oil-based pencil most of the time, but the wax-based pencils or the slightly waxier and softer pencils have their place for me. Anyways, you can see me working on these little stripes between the eyes here. This is where I had a little bit of trouble trying to figure out where the stripes were supposed to go and not mixing them up. Um, I did have an initial sketch, but I don't think I sketched in all the tiny little details, which I probably should have, but I didn't sketch in every single little detail. So this is not the most original thing as I have done this before with my penguins drawing. I added cool tones. I added a lot of, um, actually I'm not sure. I think I added more greens than that one, but it was a similar thing where I was adding a lot of blues and I'm doing the same with this zebra. I wanted the drawing overall to be kept kind of cool toned and I think that I accomplished that pretty well. I'm not sure if the nose matches up as well because the nose is a very gray, um, almost a little bit more warm toned than the rest of the drawing, um, but I thought that maybe that was a good contrast and also that's what I saw in the reference photo and decided to just kind of follow it. I definitely do want to do more of these drawings where I just kind of add my own colors and have fun with it because sometimes there's colors in my sets that I just don't get to use very often because they don't come up a lot and I do want to use them and incorporate them so maybe one way I could do that is by doing what I did in this drawing and just adding colors that weren't really there in the reference photo at all, but I decided would be fun to add. This, of course, is not a very convoluted drawing. There's a lot of stripes, which makes it a little um, tricky at, at the start when you're trying to figure out where all the stripes go. But besides that, the actual coloring process was pretty repetitive and nothing too challenging for me, just standard blending. And sometimes I think it's good not to challenge yourself with every single art piece that you do because then you tend to get frustrated and sometimes things go wrong and it's just a little bit hard and this was more a piece where I could sit down, relax, listen to some music or podcasts, which is what I did the entire time, and not have to worry about technique because it's a technique I'm used to and just kind of have fun with it. That's how I felt when I was drawing this. I do want to do more drawings similar to this one in the near future. Um, I really have wanted to draw a zebra for a while, but the only reason I haven't is because I didn't really want to do the whole black and white thing. I thought it might be a bit boring, and not that zebras are boring in any way, or if you draw a zebra that you can't do the black and white thing, but I just didn't really feel in the mood to do that. I wanted to use more color, which is why I ended up incorporating those blues that were not there in the reference photo. Now I'm aware this type of video is not everybody's style. I can't really make tutorials or technique tip videos, anything like that with a drawing sped up this much. So when I do post videos of a time lapse of my drawing from start to finish sped up like this, I mean, this was a drawing that maybe took me about nine hours or eight and a half. I would say nine hours um, in real time, maybe a little more than that. So obviously I wanted to speed it up, make a quick little fun video about it. Um, but for videos like this, I'm going to be posting them a little less often. However, I think it's fun to just chat. It's kind of relaxing. Maybe draw along with me if that's what you guys are doing for this type of video. It's not going to be highly edited. It's just kind of a relaxed watch me draw. I'm explaining a little bit about the drawing that I'm doing and my thought processes while I was working on it.
I guess we can talk a little bit about pencil nerd topics while we're here since I'm using so many different pencils. I mean, not many different colors, but I'm using three different pencil brands here. You can really tell when you're using your pencils together how different they are. The luminance, of course, were the softest and the waxiest, although they're not overly waxy. The Holbein seemed to glide. I'm just using one Holbein pencil, but I used it a lot. It was that dark blue that I used in the black stripes. And that pencil just really glides over the paper. It's an oil-based pencil, the Holbeins, and they just glide over the paper in a strange way, different to the Polychromos, but still a firm core like the Polychromos. And I don't know how to describe them. I don't know how many of you have tried Holbein because they just recently became more available in the US where I live, and I'm not sure how available they are to you where you live, but let me know if you've tried them and what you think about them. I, in no time in the near future, will I get a set because of how expensive they are, but I might buy some more open stock here and there since I do enjoy the lay down and how they work with the Polychromos as well. So that's my little pencil nerd topics for the day. I do like using my pencils all together sometimes just because if you have them, you might as well. In other pencil nerd news, however, I've been hearing a lot about the Derwent Chromaflow pencils recently and I just don't understand how Derwent keeps releasing so many different lines of pencil. I'm not sure if they're an artist grade or a student grade set, um, but I did hear about them a little bit and I'm interested in them now. I'm just interested in what they might be like and what their laydown might be like. I've seen them being compared to Prismacolor. Again, I don't know if they're marketed as artist or student grade and I'd have to look more into it. But have you guys heard of these mystery Chromaflow pencils? And if so, have you tried them? I'm very interested in what you guys or what experience you've had with them if you've heard of them or have tried them. And yeah, I think that's going to be it for today's video. I'm going to show a little end clip of the final zebra when I finished it completely and trimmed the paper and all that. And I hope that you guys enjoy relaxing type videos like these every once in a while. And yeah, just leave a comment below if you have anything that you'd like to contribute to the conversation. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so, so much for watching. Bye. Bye.